I usually have a, the salted caramel flavor, and now I'm just having the strawberry milkshake. I'm just going to take this opportunity to say that salted caramel anything is amazing. It is, hands down, the best flavor. And if you disagree with me, you're just wrong. What about chocolate? You're wrong. How's it going guys? My name's Richie Kerwin and today we're going to take a look at some of the supplements taken by the MyProtein Ambassador, Marino Katsouris. Now, one thing to point out before we get into this is that just because Marino takes these supplements doesn't mean that you need to or should take them yourself. Let's get started. Hey, what's up team? Marino here and I'm going to be taking you through my current supplement stack, which I take to help me with my training and live a healthier lifestyle. That's actually a really good point. Supplements aren't just there to help people get bigger, faster, and stronger. There are plenty of supplements that you can take just to make sure you're living a healthier life and maybe get great hair like this guy too. Now, starting with supplement number one, and that is creatine. Now, I like the Crea Pure creatine monohydrate. Just in case you're wondering why everybody talks about creatine so much, it is simply one of the most effective ergogenic aids, that's a fancy word for performance enhancer, on the market. It works. It works well, and it has a lot of research backing it up. If you hop onto PubMed, which is a website that lets you search for scientific papers and search for clinical trials of creatine, you'll find almost 5,000 papers, and that's not even counting the review papers. It's simply one of the most, if not the most, highly researched sports supplements around. Mm. Now, Marino mentions Creapure, and I often get asked, what's the difference between creatine monohydrate and Creapure. So first off, creatine comes in a few different forms, but creatine monohydrate is by far the most widely studied form, and it's the form that I recommend to my own clients. Creapure is a patented form of creatine monohydrate made by a company in Germany called Alschem Trostberg. My apologies to all the German speakers watching this. It's still the same creatine monohydrate, but it's exceptionally pure, which means it's free from impurities. In fact, it's about 99.99% creatine monohydrate. Regular creatine is still virtually free of impurities, but Creapure has been processed a little bit more thoroughly. If you've got the extra money and the level of purity is something that is important to you, then it might be worth thinking about. It's a very popular sports supplement because it works. I take five grams every day. It doesn't matter the time, morning, evening, post-workout. Uh, as long as I get five grams a day, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's so refreshing to hear this. Often you'll hear people trying to be smart and edgy by saying you need to take creatine at certain times of day or immediately before training and that's absolute <laughs> Creatine doesn't have acute effects in terms of muscle performance. You take creatine for a while, its levels build up in your muscles until they can't increase anymore and you'll maintain those benefits as long as you keep taking it every day. So it just doesn't matter when you take it, just take it daily. Creatine is great because it helps your muscles produce more ATP, meaning that you have more explosive power and can lead to muscle and strength gains. And there are a lot of misconceptions about it, mainly that it will make you lose hair, that you... There is no direct evidence for this. One study once found that taking creatine can increase DHT or dihydrotestosterone, which is associated with hair loss. But, and it's a big but, that result has never been replicated. That single result doesn't mean that creatine causes hair loss. However, it was enough for the idea to become commonly known today, even though there is no other evidence to prove it. We retain water, it's all myth. You don't need to worry about it. It's a naturally occurring substance in your body. Well, it does cause some people to hold on to water, but I need to be really clear. When people start taking creatine, they often end up looking better because creatine saturates the muscles, causes them to hold on to more water, and that makes the muscles swell and actually look fuller. Unless you're an athlete in a weight sensitive sport like MMA, that little bit of water retention isn't going to be an issue. Supplement number two, and that is L-glutamine. So, glutamine gets a lot of press and it manages to sneak its way into a lot of supplements and protein powders. Glutamine is an amino acid, and if you know your biochemistry, amino acids are the building blocks of protein. There are 21 amino acids, and nine of them are essential amino acids, or EAAs, which means that we need to get them from our diet. The rest we can actually make ourselves in our body from other amino acids. Glutamine is what's known as a conditionally essential amino acid. That means that under normal conditions, it's not an essential amino acid, but in some cases like disease, muscle wasting, or even if someone is severely burned, our body simply can't produce enough to meet our needs. A workout day for me can't be complete without some pre-workout, and I like to take the pre-workout plus. Now, 
Pre-Workout Plus is great because it has all the ingredients that you need for an awesome workout. It's all clinically dosed from 6 grams of L-citrulline malate to 3.2 grams of beta alanine to give you these insane and great pumps combined with 300 milligrams of caffeine, which is just awesome. Some people swear by pre-workouts, and if you have a particularly intense session coming up, they might be useful. Pre-workouts work in a couple of main ways. One is through stimulants such as caffeine, and this product has a nice dose of caffeine at 300 milligrams. It can improve your power output in the gym, allowing you to train a little harder and a little longer, which is really important if muscle gain and strength are your goals. And it's also really good for endurance athletes that need to perform better for longer. Another way some pre-workout ingredients can improve your gym session is by working as pump enhancers. If you don't know what a pump is, please check out the documentary Pumping Iron. Arnold Schwarzenegger explains it better than anybody else. Believe me, it's uh, worth looking it up. In terms of pump enhancers, L-citrulline helps to release nitric oxide in your blood, which causes your blood vessels to dilate, which may improve blood flow, giving you that swollen muscle feeling known as a pump. Most pre-workouts that say they have L-citrulline are incredibly low dose, so always check the pack to make sure you're getting an effective dose, which is about six to eight grams. Marino also mentions beta-alanine. That's the supplement that gives you that weird tingly sensation that most people associate with pre-workouts. Most people don't realize that besides that tingly feeling, taking beta-alanine just before a training session won't actually have a direct effect on a performance. Beta-alanine needs to be taken like creatine, daily, so you can build up a molecule called carnosine in your muscles before you'll notice any performance benefits. And then you can maintain that dose just like creatine. It will sustain you throughout your whole, whole workout and you don't need to worry. So overall, it's a great one to have and I love it. Something I always say about pre-workouts that contain caffeine and citrulline is if you take it just as you're walking onto the gym floor, you should get the full benefits when you're leaving the gym after your session. You really should try to take them about 45 minutes to an hour before you expect to be doing the most intense part of your workout. So overall, it's a great one to have and I love it. My favorite flavor is actually the rainbow candy and it tastes pretty awesome. Now, moving on to the whey protein. Obviously we have the whey. I don't like calling whey protein a supplement, but it does help you supplement protein because at the end of the day, you're not gonna get huge by just having whey protein. It's just like having chicken breast, but the convenience of having a protein shape like this is absolutely incredible. Yeah. I couldn't agree more here. Providing you're training well and you're getting enough protein in your diet, it doesn't really matter if it's whey or chicken or eggs or beef, you're still going to grow. But protein powders are super convenient and can make getting enough protein into your diet easier. And in some cases, a little cheaper too. Let's be honest, you don't want to have to grill a chicken breast every time you want some protein. So a shake is a really decent alternative. It also has digestive enzymes in to help you digest the protein better. Especially if you're a bit lactose intolerant like me, this is a perfect thing to have. If you're healthy, you won't get any real benefits from digestive enzymes, unless you're lactose intolerant like Merino here and you're taking lactase. But you could always just get a pure whey isolate, which is virtually lactose free instead. Going into the vitamins and minerals here, we have the multi, now the multivitamin. This is basically your all in one. This is perfectly dosed, so your body absorbs everything as So if you want to cover all of your nutritional bases, having a healthy, balanced diet that doesn't eliminate entire food groups should be your number one priority. A good multivitamin can act more like a safety valve, just in case some aspects of your diet aren't optimal, making sure you don't become deficient in any specific nutrients. Marino makes a good point here about not looking for the highest dosed supplement. Some vitamin deficiencies can have serious side effects and lead to diseases like pellagra from too little B3 or night blindness from too little vitamin A. Getting enough of those vitamins can completely cure those conditions, but taking too much can actually be bad for you. So yeah, more isn't always better. Alongside that, I have the Omega Balance, so these Omega-3s, I combine this uh, with all my other supplements because it's an awesome thing to take for your heart health and just overall well-being. Omegas are they're great for your skin, they're great for your bones. Basically, you can't go wrong with having some Omega in your life. Yeah, I completely agree with this. Ensuring that you have some omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids in your diet is really important for all around well-being. Heart health, brain development, skin, joints, immunity, essential fatty acids play a major role. 
I have the T Perform. This is uh, my protein's natural testosterone booster. This will just help optimize the male hormones and it's a great thing to have. And if you are experiencing any low appetite, low sex drive, this is an awesome thing to supplement into your routine uh, to help aid your optimal male performance. Optimal male performance. So testosterone boosters are another very common supplement because everyone thinks testosterone equals instant gains, big muscles. Here's the thing. These supplements often contain some mix of the same ingredients, including zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B5 or pantothenic acid, along with some other bells and whistles. If you're deficient in any of these nutrients, your testosterone levels might drop lower than they should, which isn't good. So if you improve your diet or supplement with these nutrients, your testosterone levels should go back to normal. The thing is, normal testosterone levels don't mean instant and massive muscles. The only way testosterone is going to make you massive is if you have levels that are far higher than your body can produce naturally. You need what's known as supraphysiological levels for that kind of effect, and no legal supplement is going to help you with that. If you're worried about your testosterone levels, get them checked. And if your diet is poor, work on improving that first. Now, moving on to the last supplement, I have got L-carnitine. It's a pretty underrated supplement. Not only can it help you, your body produce more energy, it's awesome for actually helping you metabolize fat. So, so I won't say much about L-carnitine. Yes, it does have a role to play in energy production because it actually helps to transport long chain fatty acids into the mitochondria in your cells where they can be broken down for energy. So yes, it can help to switch our fuel utilization to more fat than carbs, which in some cases can improve performance for some endurance type of sports because it spares muscle glycogen. However, just because it improves fat oxidation doesn't mean it improves fat loss. So this has been Marino Katsura's supplement routine. What did you think? Do you take any of these supplements yourself? Let us know in the comments. And if you have any questions about these supplements, ask us in the comment section below. And remember, like and subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.